Hey friends, what's up? And welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf. <coughs> Today we're studying Daf Chav Tes, Daf Twenty Nine of Masech the Tainus. Friends, um, a little bit, an update on my uh, health. Uh, I might need to sneeze in a second, um, but anyways, it's been quite the uh, quite the thing over the past few weeks. I mean, starting with my whole um, uh, whisper mode. And then uh, I got this vaccine on Sunday, and um, I got this vaccine on Sunday, and it's taken me for a shtickle ride. Yeah, yesterday I was pushed sick, as I explained at length at the beginning <laughs> at the beginning of the episode. I'm gonna drink a stick of water. Um, and then I wasn't able to work yesterday, and that never happens. I can't remember the last time I took a day off of work, ever. Um, well, no, not ever. I just can't remember it. Um, and then, uh, today I was able to work, thank God, but push it. I went through more tissues than the amount of protein my nephew thinks are in cookie bars. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's to say a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a funny little guy. Anyways, um, <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about a shtickle tishabov today. I guess it's appropriate that I'm feeling a shtickle modna because we're talking about tishabov. It's a modna day. And then uh, we talk about kishem shemishen nichnos av memaitin besimcho kach mishen nichnos odem marvin besimcho. That's gewaldig. And then we talk about doing laundry during uh, the month of Av, during the nine days, different machliks and around that. Friends, let's jump in. And av choftes omud. Aleph on the second line of the page, Betisha Be'av, on the ninth day of Av, Nigzer, Allah was saying, Shali Konsul Aretz Minolan. So it was decreed on the ninth day of the month of Av that our fathers would not enter into the, into Eretz Yisrael. I live in Eretz Yisrael, but it was decreed that the nation, that, uh, that the people uh, during the time of the Miraglim, they would not be able to enter into Eretz Yisrael. The Chesiv, as the Pesach says, by Yibachodesh Arishon, Bishon HaShenis, it was on the um, first month, of course, of Nisan, Bishon HaShenis, um, in the second year since the Yidin left Egypt, Be'echod L'Chodesh, in the first of Nisan, of the second year, Hukom HaMishkon, the Mishkin was um, um, uh, erected. Be'Omer Mar, we said, Shona Rishona Osa Moshe, Es HaMishkon, for one year, during the first year, since the, from when the Yidin left uh, Mitzrayim, Moshe Rabbeinu was making uh, the the Mishkan. Shniya Hekim Moshe Avisa Mishkan. And the second year is when Moshe erected the Mishkan. Mishalach Miraglim. And he also sent out the spies to Eretz Yisrael. We all know how that worked out. Very bad. Very badly. And that's ultimately what led to the decree that the people would not enter into Eretz Yisrael. Uchsiv in the Pasuk says, Vayibashona Hashenis. It was in the second year. Bachodesh Hasheni, the second month. That is, Iyar. Be'esun Bachodesh, on the 20th of the month. Naile Onun Me'amishkan Ha'edus. The cloud of glory um, moved, lifted up from upon the um, tabernacle, um, which means that it was time to travel on the 20th of Sivan. No, Iyar. <coughs> Uchsev in the Pazuk says, Vayisu me'ar Hashem, Teru Shlosh Yom, that they traveled for three days. So I believe that they're basically counting day 20, day 21, and day 22. Om Rebcham Rebchanino, says Rebcham Rebchanino, also ayom, Saru me'achare Hashem, and it was on that day, the 22nd of uh, Eor, that the Yidin uh, left from the ways of God. Uchsev and it says, Vahosav su, Vashem Rekibu, Savu Taiva, that the uh, Nudniks, among them, they had a desire. Vayashuvu vayivku company so of Gomer, and the Yidden also cried. Uchsev, and it says, Ad chodesh yomim v'gomer, for a month. Davelu esim v'taytin b'sivon, which then gets you up to the twenty-second day of Sivon. Um, mm-hmm. Alternatively, <laughs> I guess maybe it could also be from the twentieth of Er until the twenty-third of Er. And then plus 29 days gets you to the 22nd of Sivan. One way or another, we get to the 22nd of Sivan. Uchsev, and it says, Vatisogar Miriam Shivas Yomim. 
and Miriam then after speaking Lashon Hara about Moshe Rabbeinu had to uh, be you know sort of quarantined for seven days which now we are up to the 29th day of Sivan and it says and then there is the uh, parsha of the spies and it says so on the 29th of Sivan which is what we're up to right Right, we started on the 20th of ER, then we got to the 22nd of Sivan, plus 7 days, is 29th of Sivan. That's when the Miraglim went on their fateful journey. Uchsev in the Pasuk says, And the, their fateful journey, their fateful trip ended after 40 days. Wait, but isn't that only 39 days? They said no. Taka that the the uh, um, um, Tammuz of that year was Taka a, a 30 day month. Okay. The Chsev is a puzzle says. Okay, that they called a festival, a time to break the. People. <laughs> so basically, we get up to the ninth of Av, right? From the 29th of Sivan, and then throughout Tammuz, and then you get to the ninth of Av, is the end of the 40 days. And then it says, that the, that the, um, that the people, <laughs> they cried, and the nation cried on that day, on Tishabav, on that night. Um, Rabbi, um, Rabbi Yochanan, um, Osa Laila Leil Tishabavaya. And that night was the night of Tisha Be'av when they were crying. Um, Rabbi Yochanan, when the Ebishter says, Atem Bechisem Bechia Shalchinam, you cried for no reason. Bani Kovei Alochim Bechia Ledoros, I'm going to make crying for all generations. And for that reason, Tisha B'av, throughout the generations has been a fateful day, starting with when the spies came back with their um, uh, unfavorable reports about Yisrael. Continues <laughs> the Gemara, that the uh, temple, the first temple, was destroyed on the ninth of Av. Tichziv, as the Pasuk says, that on the fifth month, right, Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, the fifth month being the month of Av, B'shiv al-Chodesh, on the seventh of the month, Hishnas Tsha'esve, Shona l'melech Nebuchadnezzar, melech Bavel, the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonia, Bo Nebuzaradon, Rav Tavochim, Evid melech Bavel, Yerushalayim, that Nebuzaradon, the executioner, sounds like a big, big nudnik, and he was a slave, a servant of the king of Bavel, he came to Jerusalem. Vayisof has based Hashem v'gomer, and he burnt down the house of God. Uchsev in the pasuk says, "Vachodesh achmishi," on the fifth month, the month of Av, be'esor lachodesh, on the tenth of the month, hishnas chayesve shano, the melech nevuchad retzar, melech bavu, in the nineteenth year of nevuchad retzar, who I assume is nevuchad netzar, the king of bavu. Born nevuzaradon, Rav Tabachim, nevuzaradon, the executioner, the nudnik, came. And Omar lifnei melech bavel b'yushalayim, and he stood before the king of Babylonia in Jerusalem, v'gomer. So now, so the first pasuk says it was the seventh day of the month. The second pasuk says it was taka the tenth day of the month. So now zok the brayse v'tanya we talk a little bit brayse he efsher lomer b'shiva sharik v'nemer be'eser. It's impossible to say that the temple was destroyed on the seventh day because it was in because it says that it was destroyed on the tenth day. We have Shalom Be'eser, Shariq Far Nemar Beshiva. And you can't say that the Pei Samikosh was destroyed in the tenth day because it already says it was destroyed in the seventh day. Okay, it's not new. So, so what do we do? Beshiva, <coughs> excuse me. Beshiva Nichnusu Nochrim Leichel. Well, on the seventh day of Av, the uh, Gentiles entered into the sanctuary, the Ochlu, and they ate Dartan. Vikilkalubo and they um dis- mess you know destroyed things there. Shvi, Shmini, Vichi on day seven, eight, and nine, and then Samuchlacha Sheikha, and then close to sunset, close to when it became dark, 
on the ninth day of Av, Hitzisu Vosahor, and they burnt down the sanctuary. Vehoyadolik Vaholik Koleum Kulo, and then the um, fire, the burning down of the temple, the fire was burning throughout the tenth day. Shinema, as the Pazuk says, Oilanu Kifono Ayom Ki Notu Tzile Erev. Woe upon us that the day is coming to an end, that the night is coming in. Behind the Amr of Yochanan, this is where Yochanan says, Umle Hayisim Paoso Ador, if I, Rabbi Yochanan, of course not Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai, because he actually was in that generation, he's talking about Rabbi Yochanan, the <coughs> Amora Rabbi Yochanan. He says eh, that if he was in that generation, Lo Kavai Tevel Be Asiri, Rabbi Neshi Rubo, Shalhechon Nisrof, says Rabbi Yochanan that if he was in that generation, he would have pushed for the day that we commemorate to be the 10th of Av, because that's really when the majority of the sanctuary was in fact burnt as we said that they began to burn it at the ninth day at night but really it mostly burnt on the tenth day whereas the rabbis um, commemorate the ninth day because they consider that when the um, bad thing begins that is what we go after not when sort of the bulk of the activity happens but when it begins. How do we know that the second temple was um, uh, destroyed on um, Tishabab the Tanya? As we learn in the Brice, that there is favor on a favorable tug, on a favorable day, and there is negativity on a negative negative day. Amr, they said, um, wait, what's this? Um, there was something important that changed it. Oh, okay, fine. Say it. So, <laughs> yeah, I gotta skip a word in a second. So, I'm what they said. When the Beis Amikdash, what, when the first Beis Amikdash was destroyed, that day, the first temple was taka destroyed on Tishabav. It was also on Mutsoi Shabbos, on Mutsoi Shmiya Soy So. And it was also the eighth year of the Shemitah cycle. It was after the Shemitah. And it was the Mishmar, the, the Mishmar of Yehoyoriv. And the um, uh, Levites were singing songs. And on their platform, they were in the platform of the Mesamiktosh. And what song were they singing? Vayashiv Hashem es Onam Uvraosam Yatsmisim, that um, the Abishter is going to return upon them their their negative strength, and he's going to wipe them out in their evil. And they didn't even have the chance to finish the line, which is Yatsmisim Hashem Elokeinu, that the Abishter will destroy them. Until the Gentiles came and captured them, and the same thing happened in the second temple. That uh, on Tishabov it was destroyed. Perhaps also the rest of the story with the Levites. Nilkudah Beis Gemara. So, <coughs> excuse me. How do we know that Beisar was captured on Tishabov? Uh, it's a tradition. Nechush uh, Also, I believe Gemara. Yeah. Um, also, that that Jerusalem was plowed over. That is also a uh, Gemara. A tradition. Tanya, it is um, taught in a Brisa Kishe Chorash. Nah, let's keep Kishe Chorav. Nah. Kishe Chorav, Tironus Rufus, Arosha, Esaheichel. When Tironus Rufus, the Nudnik, um, destroyed, big Nudnik, destroyed the sanctuary. Nigzero Gzera, Rabban Gamliel, La Riga. So an edict went out that Rabban Gamliel is uh, a dead man. He's wanted, they're going to kill him. So a certain noble fellow, a Roman noble fellow, um, he came to the Beis HaMedrash. And he said, Very interesting uh, thing to say. The fellow with the um, recognizable, with the very special Givaldiga knows uh, is um, 
being sought after. Shomer, apparently that meant that he was the leader. It was a reference to Avangam Lil. Curious what his nose looked like. Shomer Avangam Lil also tashu minayu. So Avangam Lil heard this and he understood that he was wanted. So he went and he hid. Also the Gabi Bitsino and this noble fellow who announced that Rabbi Yochanan, that, that Rabbi Gamliel was um, um, wanted, so he came to Rabbi Gamliel in private, because he really was interested in saving Rabbi Gamliel, right? He wanted to let Rabbi Gamliel know that this was what was going down. So he found Rabbi Gamliel in private, Omar lay, and he says to Rabbi Gamliel, listen, if I save you, will you guarantee me that I will go to the world to come? Amalei Hain, Rabbi Gamliel says yes. Amalei Ishtabali, Ishtabali. So he says to Rabbi Gamliel, swear to me that I will go to the world to come. And Rabbi Gamliel swore to him. Salik, the Igra, Nafil Vamis. Then this noble fellow went up to the roof, jumped off the roof, Poshit committed suicide. Ugmire, and the tradition is, I guess in Roman circles, the Chigaz, Gezerta, Vamis, Chad Minayu, that when there is a uh, decree and then somebody dies, that Kilu, if the Romans made a decree, in this case the decree was that Rabbi Gamliel is a dead man, but then one of them dies, i.e. this fellow who committed suicide and now is dead, so they, 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 they make their um, uh, edict null and void. Right, so therefore, basically, this fellow, by jumping off the Roof and killing himself, he made the edict against Rabbi Gamliel null and void. Yotzus of Askov Amra, a voice came out of heaven and proclaimed, Adunze Mizuman Chayo Lamhaba, that this noble fellow is going to the world to come. Wow. Tanur Abonon, the rabbis taught Kishachara Habayiz Barishona that when the first temple was destroyed. That these groups of young Kohanim gathered together with the keys of the sanctuary in their hands. And they went up to the roof. They went up to the roof of the um, sanctuary. And they said before God, Master of the world, since we clearly we're not trustworthy um, treasurers. You, Mavtechus Mesuroslach, these keys should go to you. Vizarkum Klapi Maila, and they threw them up towards uh, heaven. Vyotsusok in Pisas Yad Vikibaton Mayim, and then a hand came out of heaven and received the keys that were thrown. Vayim Kovtu, Vinoflu Sochaur, and they jumped off the roof of the sanctuary into the fire. Palein Konen Yishayahu Anovi, and regarding them, Yishayahu Anovi laments, Masage Chizayon, that there was a, um, you know, uh, I guess maybe a vision from Jerusalem, Malach Eifo Kielisa Kulach Negagos, that um, you all went up to the, um, that you all went up to the roofs, Chuos um, Malaya Ir Homia. Kiria Aliza, that this um, city that was once about uh, rejoicing, your dead are not the dead of swords, Flomesa Muhammad, not the dead of battle. Avba Kodesh Baruch Hu Nehmer also says about the Abish to Makakir Kir, Vishua El Hahar, that the Abish to also was crying out because of Har Tzion, because of, of Yerushalayim. That was being destroyed. So, um, yeah, that uh, so that that happened on Tisha B'av. The Mishnah had said, Ov that when Av enters, we talk and minimize the um, happiness. Amr of Yehuda, bread of Shmuel Bar Shilas, the Rav, says of Yehuda, the son of Shmuel Bar Shilas, and the name of Rav, Kishem Shemishanichnas. Of mimaitim besimcha that just like when the month of Av enters, we reduce our happiness. Kach mishinichnas other maibin besimcha. Well, similarly, when other the month of other enters in, we increase our happiness. 
Amr Papi says in Papi Hilkach, therefore, by Yisrael, of a Jewish fellow, the Isle Dino Bahadi Nochri, that he has a uh, court case with a Gentile, Lishtimate Mine Be'ov, Deriyah Mazale, he should try to avoid it if it is in a month, uh, he should try to, uh, you know, do what he can to have it not be in the month of Av because there is bad vibes. And rather he should try to arrange for the court case, the showdown, to be in other because there's good vibes in other. Friends, you like other? Other's fun, right? Purim. What do you guys usually do for Purim costumes? You dress up? Here in Achlaot, dressing up is a big thing. All the people dress up. What should I do this year? I don't know. Gotta figure it out. I haven't thought about it yet. I haven't thought about it. Oh, we discussed Purim costumes the other day. What was it? The donkey of, uh, of, 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 of Rabiosi de Minyukros. Was that his name? <coughs> Rabiosi de Minyukros? A donkey that you give it money and run away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, just be careful. Don't don't tell people that you got it from Babylon Talmud. Then, then we'll get a bad name in the Dafyomi community. <laughs> Although maybe that could be nice. <laughs> we'll stay as sort of this like sort of fringe group of thieves. <laughs> Let's go bite the friends. <laughs> uh, I got a cough. One second. Alright, well, um, Lachem Achrez Besikfo. Alright, so the Pasuk says, to give you a, a favorable, to give you hope. Om of Yudabed of Shmuel Bashilas. So it says of Yudabed of Shmuel Bashilas, right, we're going to say a few things that he had said. Mishmed Rab, the name of Rab, Elu de Kolim Vichle Pishton. These are uh, palm trees and uh, flax, uh, linen, the Vayomer. See that the smell of my son is like the smell of the field. Hashem that the Eved blessed. Like an apple orchard. That sounds very very nice. I, yeah, apple orchards sound very nice. I have apples in my fridge. Not much else though. Shabbos Chotishabav Leos Besocha. I'm swimming the Sapper Lachabis. Trying to figure out how much I should tell you about the contents of my refrigerator. <laughs> my mom listens to this. So I gotta be careful. Because most of it's hers. <laughs> Let's go fight her. So, the week that um, Tishabav falls out. <coughs> The week of Tishvah, so Asur in the Sapper the Chabbos, you're not allowed to get a haircut and you're not allowed to launder your clothing. Amr of Nachman says of Nachman, Osharnu el Chabbos v'lilbosh. Says of Nachman that when we say that during the week that Tishvah falls out in, so you're not allowed to do laundry. That's only saying you're not allowed to do laundry and wear the laundry. But you're allowed to partially do laundry, right? So meaning, I don't know, whatever. Your laundry is piling up over the course of nine days, which I think, as I pointed out recently, recently has not been such a chiddish for me. I think I'd also said recently that that was not relevant. And then, um, so, so, so if the pile, laundry is just piling up, so you want to already just do laundry in advance, but you're not going to wear the fresh laundry, you're just going to do it. So says of Nachman, that's fine. Rav Shesha says that simply um, doing laundry and even just not wearing it, even just leaving it, is not allowed. You're not allowed to do anything to do with laundry. Um, Rav says of Shesha, you should know that the cats with the Rab, that the launderers of the house of Rab, <coughs> they would not do laundry during the week that Tishabab falls out in. Most of Amnuna Taka asks, Ekasha Bachamishi Mutar Mpnek for the Shabbos. We said in the Mishnah <coughs> that nonetheless, even though you're not allowed to um, do uh, laundry, you're allowed to on Thursday out of, uh, because of the honor of Shabbos and the interest of, the, of honoring the Holy Sabbath. 
Now the mind. So how how would these opinions fit in? So now if it's like Rav Sheshes, that it's saying that no, uh, if it is like Rav Nachman, that what's not allowed is that. Wait, what we're saying that you're not allowed to um, do laundry and wear it, but you're allowed to do laundry and leave it. Exactly. If we're saying like Rav Nachman, that what you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to uh, do laundry and wear it, but you're allowed to do laundry and leave it. And we're saying that, but on Thursday it's permitted to do laundry and wear it out of the honor of Shabbos. How does doing laundry and wearing it out of the honor of Shabbos on Thursday help? What it must mean is that what's not allowed is to um, do laundry and leave it. No, so it's like a shit. Well, what? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If it's like Rav Nachman, it doesn't make sense, right? Meaning because Rav Nachman says that you're allowed to do laundry and leave it. What's not allowed is to do laundry and wear it. And if it's like Rav Nachman, that you're not allowed to do laundry and wear it, but on Thursday you're allowed to do laundry and wear it out of the honor of Shabbos, well, what does wearing your laundry on Thursday have to do with Shabbos? Rather, it must be that what um, so it must be like Rav Sheshis, that you're not allowed to do laundry and wear it, but you're not even allowed to do laundry and leave it. But on Thursday, but on Thursday, you are permitted to do your laundry um, and leave it out of the honor of Shabbos, which is coming up. Shabbos, Kula Asher, but the rest of the week would not be allowed. So it's like Rav Sheshis. So then we say, no, no, you can even say it's like Rav Nachman, that it means that you are not allowed to do laundry and wear it. And what it means is, it's talking about a fellow who only has one article of clothing. And therefore, he only has one article of clothing, he wears it every day of the week, including Shabbos. And therefore, we're saying that um, he would be allowed to do laundry on Thursday and also wear it out of, in preparation for Shabbos because this is his Shabbos clothing. says A fellow who has but one um, article of clothing, he's permitted to launder it during Chol HaMoed. Itmanami was also taka stated, Amr binyamin, Amr balazer, Loshanu el l'chabiz velubosh, avalaniach mutter, so like Rav Nachman, that we're saying that um, you're not allowed to do laundry and wear it, but you would be allowed to do laundry and leave it. Mace um, but we have a kasha on Rav Nachman, that we have a bride that says, also, l'chabiz l'fnei tishubav, avilu laniach l'achwa tishubav, that you're not allowed to do laundry before tishubav, even if the plan is to leave it until after tishubav. That's still not allowed. It's a bride that's saying this. And our ironing is the equivalent of their wa their 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 laundering. Okay. And um linen clothing. There is no uh, uh what's it called? Uh, ironing doesn't apply to them, okay? Tuvta. Sakasha on Rav Nachman. Right? Because Rav Nachman had said that you'd be allowed to do laundry and leave it. Yeah, we have a verse that's saying that you're not allowed to do laundry and leave it. So therefore, um, that's going to be a problem for Rav Nachman. Bagiori sent in the name of Rav Yochanan that even though they said that there's no halacha of ironing when it comes to um, linen clothing, but nonetheless, you're not allowed to wear them during the week that Tishabab falls out in. Now it says Rab that when we say that during the week that Tishabab falls out, you're not allowed to wear laundered clothing. So that's only up until Tishabab. So Tishabab is on a Wednesday, for example. So up until Wednesday, you're not allowed to wear this laundered clothing. But after Wednesday, 
you'd be allowed to. It's not the entire week. It's only uh, the entire week up until Tisha Where Shmuel says that even after Tisha B'av, the, remain, the remainder of the week is also forbidden. Meisve, we have a kasha. Let's see, what's the kasha? Shabbos Shachot Tisha B'av, Leos Besocha, that the week that Tisha B'av falls out in it, also the Sapper L'Chabes, you're not allowed to get a haircut, you're not allowed to do laundry, Uvachamishi Mutarin, Mepnek for the Shabbos, but on Thursday, you're allowed to, out of the honor of Shabbos. Ketzer, what does this mean? Cholios Be'echot B'Shabbos, that if Tisha B'av falls out on Sunday, well then, well then you're allowed to do um, you're allowed to do um, laundry the entire week Tishbov was on a Sunday the rest of the week is after Tishbov you can do laundry all week if um, Tishbov falls out on a, on, a, on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday the fun of us and the of mutter. So then, before, right, prior to Tisha B'av, you would not be allowed to get a haircut to do laundry. But afterwards, you're allowed. Cholios be'erev Shabbos. If Tisha B'av falls out on Friday, mutter lechabes b'chamish mipnek for the Shabbos. You're allowed to do laundry on Thursday out of the honor of Shabbos. Vim lo kibes b'chamishi. If you did not do laundry on Thursday, well then even. Uh, well then you can even do um, laundry on Friday <coughs> which is Tisha B'av in the afternoon you'd be allowed to do um, laundry but nonetheless Abai, some say of Achab Yaakov they would curse upon a fellow who would do, who would um, leave his laundry until Friday which is itself Tisha B'av and do the laundry in the afternoon on Tisha B'av, they were not a fan of that. Continues the Brisa. Chalios Basheni Uvachamishi. If Tisha B'av falls out on a Monday or on a Thursday, where there was already, they're already reading from the Torah on Monday and Thursday, so there are already three aliyahs. Well then, Korin Shlosho Maftir Echad. Well then, on Tisha B'av, there are three aliyahs, and the fourth one, and the, and the third one, the third aliyah is also Maftir. Bashlishi Uvarvi, if Tishba falls out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, Kori Echun Maftir Echun. Well then, there's only one fellow who's called up to read from the Torah, and he does Maftir Oichin. Ribyosi, <laughs> Homer says Ribyosi, Loolam Korin Shlosho Maftir Echun, really, uh, you know, even if Tishba is on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, still there's going to be three, um, Aliyas, and the last one is going to be Maftir. Tiyuvta de Shmuel. So we see it's Taka Kasha on Shmuel. How come it's a Kasha on Shmuel? Because this Bryce is saying that the restrictions are only up until um, Tisha B'av. And after Tisha B'av, um, the restrictions are waived. Yet Shmuel says that the restrictions apply throughout the, you know, throughout the entirety of the week. Amalach Shmuel Tanoihi. That Shmuel will simply respond that it's taka machlokes tanoi. The Tanya is we learn in the Brais that Tishbav Shcholios B'Shabos that if the ninth of Av falls out on Shabbos, Mechen Erev Tishbav Shcholios B'Shabos, or if um, the ninth or if the eighth of Av Erev Tishbav falls out on the Shabbos, Ochel V'Shosek Kol Tzorko, you can eat and drink as much as you want. Umaylal Shulchano Afilu Kisuda Shloim B'Shaito. And you could put all tor- all sorts of gevaldige gishmake maidanim on the table on the Shabbat the, for the Shabbos sudas, like the meals of uh, King Solomon of Shlomo when he was in his heyday in his prime. Fasul the sapper lechabes moshchodesh varatainus diver of meir, and you're not allowed to get a uh, haircut or to uh, wash do laundry from moshchodesh until the tainus until Tishba. Right, so the nine days, essentially. Rabbi Yehuda <laughs> Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, Kola Chodosh, Achodesh Kulo Asur. So says Rabbi Yehuda that Taka the entire month is also to get a haircut, do laundry. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel Omer says, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and also Ella Osa Shabbos Bavad says, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel that only that week is what is a problem. Vitani Idoch and Vitaka learn. In another Bryce of Anoig, 
Avel Meir Rosh Chodesh Varatainis Divir Meir. The Meir says that there is a mourning from Rosh Chodesh until the fast day. Rabbi Yudah Omer Kol Chodesh Kulo. Rabbi Yudah says for the entire month. Uh, Osir. It's forbidden. Rabbi Shimon Gamaliel Omer says Rabbi Shimon Gamaliel Eno Osir El Osir Shabbos Bavad. Only that week. So now, so Shmuel is basically saying, like Rabbi um, Shimon Gamaliel, that it's Osir for the entire week. Um, all three opinions come from the same pasuk. The pasuk says that I will put to rest all of its rejoicing, its festivals, its months, and its weeks. The, the opinion from Rosh um, Chodesh um, until the fast day. He learns that from the word Chaga, the festival. The opinion that it's the entire month. Uh, also, it's forbidden. Mechodsha comes from the word months. Umanda Amr Kola Shabbos Kula also Mishabata. And Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, who says that the entire week is also, comes from the word uh, from Mishabata, from the Shabbos. Amurava Alacha Kreb Shimon Gamliel. Vamurava Alacha Kreb Meir. Vitavayu the Kula says Rava that Alacha is both like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel and like Rabbi Meir to be lenient, what does this mean? Utsricha, you need it. The Ashmin and Allah Kreb Meir. If you would only say that Allah is a Kreb Meir, I would mean a Afidu Meir Shkodesh. I would think even from Shkodesh, come Ashmin and Allah Kreb Shimon Gamliel. That's why it says Allah is a Kreb Shimon Gamliel. Let's just go weiter for a minute. The Ashmin and Allah Kreb Shimon Gamliel. And if we would say that Allah is a Kreb Shimon Gamliel, that um, it's only also during the week, I would mean a Afidu Lacharav, even after Tishbav, come Ashmin and Allah Kreb Meir. Therefore, it says like Kreb Meir. What does that mean? It means that according to Kreb Meir, um, the restrictions are from Shkodesh until Tishabav, but after Tishabav, um, the restrictions are waived. According to Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, um, from Rosh Chodesh it's allowed, it's only the week of Tishabav that it's not allowed, but it's the entire week. So it says Rave that the Lacha is both like Rabbi Meir and like Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, but to be lenient. To be lenient in that it's not from Rosh Chodesh, it's only the week of Tishabav, but also that it's not after Tishabav, it's only up until Tishabav. So it's the week of Tishabav until Tishabav, that is what Rava says. Um, friends, that was the Apchof test of Masech the Tainis. I think it was a very interesting daf. We discussed all of the things, the terrible things, the bad things that happened on Tishabav and how Tishabav, right, we said, the Ebrishter says that we were crying for no reason, so therefore we're going to make it a day to cry for all generations. And then we learn, Mishinichnos of, Mimaitim Besimcho, and Mishinichnos Adar, Marbin Besimcho. And then we talked about the restrictions that occur um, during the month of Av until Tishabav, we saw three opinions in that Machlokas. The opinion of Rav Meir is that it's from Rosh Chodesh until Tishabav. The opinion of Rav Yehuda it, uh, is that it is the entire month of Av. The opinion of Rav Shimon ben Gamliel is that it is the week of Tishabav. And Rav's opinion is that Dalacha is a combination of Rav Meir and Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, that it's the week of Tishabav, but only until Tishabav. Um, friends? That was Tavchav Tesuk Mesech Tainis. I hope I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out.